Board of Appeals. We welcome you all. I'd like to start out with a roll call, if we could start at the far right. Uh, you would introduce yourself, please. Stephen LaPlante. Len Galino. Gib Mendelson. And I'm Jay Chapman. So there are four board members present this evening. Three are unable to attend. We do have a quorum uh, as required. Four of seven board members are present this evening, so we can uh, carry on the, with the meeting and uh, vote as needed. Uh, for the two cases that we will be reviewing this evening, a simple majority of voting members present is all that is required to uh, approve the permit. First item of business is to approve the March 23rd uh, meeting, minutes of the meeting. Do we have any comments from any board members? I have a, a couple on page one, line 46. Uh, at the end of that sentence, if you would change the word do to see, see the amount. Page three, line two, stating that there are specific, the word inappropriate should, the IN should be removed and that should be changed to and appropriate. So it would read specific and appropriate questions. Page would be page seven. Or the next to the last page, page seven. Line thirty five, line thirty four. Uh, if you would insert after street after the word is at the line thirty four, possibly. Uh, and after the word, line 35, after the word now, should be a period and the remainder of that line be deleted. As it stands now, period. Those are the only comments that I have. Are there any other comments? Hearing none, can I have a motion to approve the minutes of the March 23rd meeting? So moved. Second. Those in favor? Uh, Please abstain, if you would, uh, since you were not present okay. at the meeting. Three in favor, zero opposed. Thank you. <coughs> there is no old business. New business to hear item number one, to hear the request of Barbara Galeno, five-part circle, tax map U54, lot 16C, I'm sorry, 15C, for a conditional use permit to operate a home business, specifically a culinary consultation, private instruction, and writing business. One item that I'd like to, before we mention that, I'd like to regress one moment if I could and welcome our new board member, Mr. Leonard Galeno, who will be filling the unexpired term of Jack Keneally. We welcome you to the board. Thank you. I'm sorry I didn't mention that immediately prior. Uh, that brings up the next point, and that is that Mr. Galeno is husband of the first applicant, Barbara Galeno, and I believe he would like to excuse himself. Would you please state your desires for the record, please? Um, I believe that would be most appropriate to recuse myself for this application. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm sorry I didn't introduce you before I introduced the first case. Uh, before I ask Ms. Galeno to... No, I'm sorry. Right ahead. Before I ask Ms. Galeno to come to the stand, uh, 
Uh, I'd like to mention that there are now only three members of the board who are present to vote on this conditional use permit. Uh, Ms. Galino does have the option to delay the hearing of the case until more members are present. Uh, I'd like you to come to the podium, please. And you may want to discuss that first before you come to the podium. That's why I mentioned it at this time. Uh, if you do, uh, you do have the option to delay the hearing of the case until more board members are present. And we would like you to come to the podium and state whether you object to being reviewed by only three, three board members at this time. That's fine. We'll meet with the three board members. So for the record, you do not object to? Correct. Okay. Uh, also, if there's any person in the audience who might be in opposition to this case, you also have the right to object to the case being heard by only three board members. And you also have the right to request the delay of the hearing of the case until more board members are present. Do I hear anyone in the audience who is in opposition objects to this first case being heard tonight? Hearing none, uh, for the record, there are no objections to proceeding. So thank you very much. And if you would introduce yourself, state your address, and explain your business. Sure. My name is Barbara Galino. I live at Five Park Circle, Cape Elizabeth. And um, my business, uh, the name of it is Cooking from Camp Chaos, Maine. And I do culinary consultation, uh, private instruction, and food writing. Currently, I'm writing a cookbook. Uh, I've received a grant from the IACP and James Beard Foundations uh, to do research for the cookbook I'm writing on Maine uh, at the Harvard Library, the Schlesinger Library at Harvard. Um, my cookbook is due, the manuscript is due December 15th of this year. And in addition to that, I've written a column, a food column for a small uh, holistic journal in Maine. I um, do cooking classes. I've taught for 10 years at the Whip and Spoon, the former Whip and Spoon. I do cooking classes and appear on TV for Maine Health. Um, and I love cooking and um, want to be able to see clients in my home for culinary consultation or private instruction. And also interview uh, people sometimes for my writing. Open the, uh, the board to discussion. Uh, any questions regarding this? If any member has, please state the question. Uh, one quick question for you. Do you anticipate a great deal of traffic? <clears throat> no, I, I do not anticipate um, very much traffic. I'm anticipating, in the application I submitted, I anticipated that I'd have about 18 clients per month. So uh, times two trips is 36 trips per month. Currently, there are 13 houses on Park Circle. Each of those houses has at least two cars. Some of them have three because they have teenagers. Uh, we have four school buses come per week, lawn people, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I anticipate there's probably 136 or more trips per day. So 18 clients times two, 36. That's just slightly over one per day if you thought of about it um, in regards to per month. So it's a very minimal impact. Very minimal impact. In addition, I'll just add that um, we have a very large circular driveway, so I can accommodate cars very easily. There will be no off-street parking whatsoever. Would you ever uh, have group classes? Yes, I do anticipate to have group classes, and the classes would have no more than six or eight people at the most. Uh, coming and I can accommodate eight cars in my driveway easily with still access to the road. It would not block the driveway completely. I also brought photographs if you'd like to see that. I'd be happy to show you um, how the driveway is set up. But I also will be doing individual instruction as well, private. How often do you anticipate having the group classes? Probably no more than two uh, per month or three if they were smaller. Would those be in the daytime or the evening? 
either daytime or evening. It all depends on the clients that I would be working with. A lot of times, um, particularly senior citizens like coming during the day, but women in particular that have children in school will come in the evening. Um, so that's what I'd be looking at. Regarding the, the classes, you said there would be six to eight per class? Per class, if I did do a class, yes. Or it could be smaller if I get a group. Um, sometimes I have one person or um, you know, two or three friends that want to come together for a class. Uh, in our ordinance, there are seven requirements that must be met for home business. One of the requirements is item number two. I'll read that. The nature of the business of professional use shall not increase vehicular traffic on a street by more than 2% of the current average annual daily traffic or 10 trips per day, whichever is larger. A, uh, in the form that was completed, it states that uh, one customer visit is two trips. Mm -hmm. uh, according to the ordinance then, the, the maximum that could attend at any given day would be five uh, customers, uh, and uh, which would be 10 trips per day. Mm -hmm. There's another way of looking at this, and that is a percent of vehicular traffic on the street. Uh, uh, this was recently changed. It was the ordinance read that it could increase the vehicular traffic by no more than 2%. Uh, uh, they recently added the 10 trips per day to, for the benefit of cul-de-sac or sh mm -hmm. small short streets. 2% uh, 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 would be an excess number of a, a major type street. Uh, therefore, based on, on that, uh, you can only see five on any given day, mm -hmm. according to the articles. How will this impact your, your business? Well, because I wouldn't have five people a day, um, because I don't plan on doing cooking classes uh, or private instruction every single day, and I was thinking of it more as having two to three classes per month with six to eight people per class. That's how I came up with um, basically 18 people. And those 18 people, if, if I did two classes a month at eight people each, that would be... Um, 16, there would be 32 trips, but they would be two days per month, not every day. So that's how I looked at it. Um, I don't have the capacity myself to do that many cooking classes because I do too much writing. So um, I'm looking at really doing only two or three per month. That's all I can really do. So I understand what you're saying, but I'm also saying it's not going to be an everyday occurrence. One of our... Uh obligations that in interpreting, not interpreting, but in uh, following the ordinance is that it clearly states that uh, daily traffic cannot exceed 10 trips per day. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is no exception to that uh, mm -hmm. from a business standpoint. That would be five customers mm -hmm. per day. Uh, so we cannot look at it over a month. And what you're saying is that it spread out over a month. Uh, it has to be looked at at a specific impact on traffic in any given day. Okay. So that would preclude your six or eight. So it would have to be smaller is what you're saying, the class size. According to the ordinance, it can be no more than five customer visits per day, which generates 10 customer trips per mm -hmm. day maximum. Right. And there and and there that cannot be waived. Okay. That's, that's a stated requirement in the ordinance. Uh, the other way to look at it would be two percent. Okay. Uh, and that of the av average annual daily traffic, and in which case to to receive that amount that would be far in excess of, of ten trips per day. Mm -hmm. uh, if you calculated that out. Mm -hmm. So it's in your favor to look at, at the ordinance which states the percentage of traffic are 10 trips per day. 
that is the maximum number. Okay. I'm fine with that. Um, as I um, stated before, uh, you know, I mean, I know that there are certain things that would be um, yeah. that I need to meet, and I'm willing to meet that, but I didn't realize that. I was looking at it per month. Uh, unfortunately, I want you to understand, we cannot look at it. Right. I, I understand that. Uh, uh, you stated uh, 36 trips per month or 18 customers per month right. is what you stated. Uh, you, you couldn't have 18 customers on one day and say you've satisfied the month. The ordinance doesn't look I at it in that, that way. It looks at it per day. Mm -hmm. It can be no more than five per day. Right. So if I did a cooking class, it couldn't be more than five cars per day. Unless a couple. Pardon me? Unless a couple. Correct? Did you have any other questions? Actually, I have one for the chair. As a, if you can clarify it for me, because I think we've run into the situation before. If there are three members present from the board, our vote, our, our motion needs to it needs to be unanimous. Does it not? Is that correct? Uh, the regulations or rules that we follow state that. Uh, to hold the meeting, we have to have a quorum, which is four present. After the meeting is is started, and one board member needs, or the the number of voting board members needs to be lessened from that amount, you can still carry on with the vote. Uh, it requires a simple majority of the voting members present, and in our case, it would be two of the three voting members would have to. Uh, vote in the affirmative for the permit to be Good. granted. Thanks for clarifying that. And I have a, another question. Sure. Uh, regarding, uh, there are three aspects, uh, private instruction, writing, and culinary consultation. Now, you stated that the members who would be attending uh, six to eight per class. That would be the culinary cons consultation portion. Is that correct? No, that would be private instruction. Private instruction. Okay. Mm -hmm. Culinary so, consultation might consist of one person coming um, to figure out a party, uh, what they need to serve, or someone that might have a particular diagnosis such as diabetes, which I'm familiar with, and learning some new recipes and just sitting with them and going over things versus actually instructing them. So culinary consultation would typically be one-on-one. -on -one. Correct. Private instruction would be a group. Could be a group because Could be it would group. also be individual as well. And your writing business would be? It's pretty solitaire. <laughs> it's just me. <laughs> uh, how would you expect to uh, obtain customers? Advertising and what and what mash, uh, fashion would you obtain customers? I have uh, an online newsletter with subscribers. Most of the subscribers that I have are in the state of Maine. I also um, have a large following of people that have um, known about my work for the last 15 years as a cooking instructor since I taught publicly. And I've also taught here at Cape Elizabeth, too, for community services. So pretty much it's word of mouth. I would not be, there would not be a sign out in front of my house. There will not be a sign on my car. Um, I more than likely will not be taking out advertisements in papers, for example. It's pretty much word of mouth, and that's how I've operated for a long time, where I've taught at other people's houses. 
the first thing you said was, uh, you said membership, is that a subscription membership? I have a free online newsletter through my website. Okay. And I have subscribers to that um, newsletter, so I might advertise in my own newsletter that I'm having cooking classes. Or people who might be coming to your house, are these people known to you, or could they be strangers? Or Most of the people would be known to me. I would make every attempt to learn who they are if they were calling me. Most people I know through reference from other people that I'm familiar with, so. Okay, and they would typically be from the Portland area? Cumberland and York County, I would say, is the largest majority. I do um, have cooking students that I've taught in the past that live as far as Camden and Portsmouth, New Hampshire, in the other direction. Would you have any sign outside your building at all? Absolutely not. Uh, regarding your hours, uh, you state that uh, you're requesting, would you please go over the hours that you would like to be seen? You, you stayed in, in your uh, Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, could you please clarify that? Please? Right. I did put down the largest majority of hours that I would do private instruction. So, in other words, um, writing is, of course, a very different thing. Um, and culinary consultation, within that time period, I would be doing culinary consultation or private instruction. Of course, again, I'm looking at the, at the widest amount of time. I would not be doing, I, I could not be working the entire time in that um, period that I gave you from Monday to Saturday. I do quite a bit of writing, but I would not be seeing clients in that whole time, but within that time period. So for example, if I was to do a cooking class, whether it was private or it was a group, most cooking classes go between two and three hours. So if I was to do a cooking class, it might start at nine o'clock in the morning, it would end between 11 and noon. Uh, regarding the time into the evening, uh, one of the uh, abilities that we have as a board is to put conditions on the home business. Uh, what would your impact be if, uh, is it necessary to go that late at night? To go as late as 10 o'clock? Um, it's not my preference, but I thought that I would be, um, give full disclosure for the application that it could go that late. Most of the times when I've taught cooking classes, they start at six and they end by nine at the latest. Most cooking classes um, would be, the actual instruction time would be two to, two to three hours. So the people that were coming to the class would be gone by nine o'clock. Uh, would it be necessary to have evening classes? Yes, I would like to have evening classes because I believe that I need to um, give opportunities to people that cannot come during the day, that work during the day, or do not have childcare during the day in order to teach them as well. In addition, um, I will just mention that one of the reasons I want to do this in my home is because I have two children with disabilities. And I did give great consideration to having a um, office outside of the home where I'd be doing these things, but I don't believe that that is uh, something that I can do due to the nature of my children's um, particular disabilities, and one child is medically compromised. Um, he was in the hospital during 2003 for a total of four months. W one point was three and a half months uh, in Boston. So for me to have a business outside of my home, I wouldn't have been able to do two things. Certainly if I have a business in my home, it allows me the opportunity to work. In addition, if I need to meet his needs, then I just don't teach cooking classes or meet with clients. It's, it's as simple as that. I don't have to worry about the expense and need to do something outside of my home. The uh, issue that stands out at the moment that uh, would preclude us from going forward is your uh, number of vehicular or vehicle trips per day exceeds the maximum uh, unless you're uh, 
fully agreeable to meeting that we uh, based on other things uh, that we've heard that is the one issue that precludes us from going forward at this time mm -hmm. and I don't have a problem with that I'm willing to live within the um, to comply with what the zoning board sets forth so five cars one ten trips per day is fine there could be no more than five trips five cars attend your house per day correct I understand that uh, another or the, along the same line in your application you state 36 per month or 18 cars per month is how you stated it it mm -hmm. requested trips per day you uh, you stated 36 per month and then clarified that uh, with an explanation that would be 18 customers a day is it your in what are your intents to grow your business is this a, a maximum that you would or do you intend to to grow this more than 18 customers per month and uh, would you please uh, explain your thoughts along that line too sure um, my intention right now is to write cookbooks and as I said I already have a contract with a publisher uh, and that manuscript is due December 15th and I now um, have an agent and have two more book offers that are beginning to be in the works so my anticipation is to do mostly writing however I also can supplement my income uh, by doing private instruction and culinary consultation so if my book hits the New York Times bestseller list then I will be writing books and working pretty hard to do that if I was to get to the point where I could teach um, my cooking classes were were in more demand let's say then I would look at the opportunity to do things outside of my home in addition right now what I can do is live within the um, you know comply with what the zoning board sets forth but there are other places that I can teach outside of my home that contract with me as an independent contractor such as the market basket in Camden uh, LaRue kitchen down in Portland um, a Tretzi in Portsmouth Stonewall kitchen in York there's other places that I can grow my business outside of my home okay. uh, what what we need to address then uh, in this is that you can limit your business to five trips per day maximum yes I can and do you you have requested 18 customers per month is is that a maximum or do you intend to grow that 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 was my question earlier and I'd well, like, I, I need a response for sure that. I believe that I would do again two to three uh, classes per month at at the most so that would be 18 um, clients if three of them had eight people then it would be 24 but I don't anticipate that so even though we could look at it and say the zoning board says I can have 10 trips per day I wouldn't have five people in a class per day I just personally can't um, meet that that type of need so I'm really only looking at two to three per day uh, three per month does that answer your question yes and, and the reason being is that uh, uh, traffic is is an impact on the neighborhood mm -hmm. and and that is one of our uh, obligations is to address that uh, uh, and if you uh, only plan on having two or three trip uh, classes per month uh, if that is going to turn into three or four or five classes per week times four weeks that that's a, a difference and if that's your intent then we should know that right I understand but it's not my intent and you're you're you are stating that your future uh, anticipated business growth is is to be fairly stable as to what you have two or three classes per month and you will limit that to five per day correct or five per class five cars per correct. class that is correct and again I will just state that I have ample room in my driveway and I did bring pictures if you would like to see them we have a very large driveway circular drive 
easy access um, to accommodate those cars without any, any impact on the neighborhood. Um, treed, wooded, between both of um, my house and my neighbor's houses. So, and I don't believe you have the pictures, so I'd be happy to show them to you. Any other questions? Um, I just have, have two more, Mr. Colino. Sure. Uh, one, of the, um, one of the conditions that you have to comply with with respect to um, uh, a conditional use for a home business is that uh, the business that is conducted um, doesn't produce any uh, excessive odors or fumes or anything like that. Um, I don't anticipate uh, I don't expect that you anticipate doing any cooking that would uh, significantly increase the uh, the aroma in our neighborhood. In the neighborhood. Right. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> well, of course, as a cook and as a cooking teacher, I can say that food odor is usually a good odor. Uh, so I understand your concern. Um, I do not believe that it will impact the neighborhood in a negative way. Certainly, most food odor is contained in the home. Most of the type of cooking I do is within the home. I have a venting system, obviously. Um, and I, I don't see that as being a problem. Okay. And, and the other last question I had uh, mm -hmm. was that you indicated that um, occasionally you do some consulting for uh, someone who is uh, planning a party, uh, an event, whatever. Um, uh, in conjunction with that, uh, do you ever do any catering? No, I don't. I don't like catering. Uh, so, and I do get asked quite a bit, but I do not do any catering at all. And I don't anticipate doing any. Um, that's actually what I found, which was better for me, was to do uh, culinary consultation and not really party planning, but assisting with the food and letting people know what they can do on their own or they can um, purchase from various restaurants and other organizations in the area. So, and I, I will mention culinary consultation. You know, the way business works today, pretty much, I would say probably 80% of it is via phone or email. And very rarely does somebody want to come to your home, but I did want to allow for that to look at uh, recipes together and go through numbers and uh, things like that to assist them. Great. Thank you very much. You're Do welcome. you expect any type of deliveries of either equipment or supplies? No. I mean, not any more than, uh, it, it's mostly me going out to Hannaford and the old port and buying food, just like I do now for my family. No commercial deliveries or N no, I would not as have part of your business? Right, it's not part of my business. I would not be having commercial deliveries. Also, your your application doesn't include any um, applications for a building permit or any building plans. So I'm assuming you're going to your your kitchen is somewhat residential. And it's in its design. And it will remain that way. Correct. My kitchen is residential in design, and the plan is to use the kitchen that I have. Um, and I, I think that answers your question. So no, I wasn't applying for a building permit at the same time. Did you want to see these pictures? Um, let me. As you're approaching. Yeah. Well, this is turning so off the street to you. Yeah, going towards the street. Going okay. the street. And then this is the area where a very large amount of parking area. There's a two car garage with an extra room, so the parking needs to be parked up mm -hmm. four cars right in the back. It's very private. Okay. So. <clears throat> Thank you. If there are no other questions, uh, thank you, Ms. Colleen. Thank you. One last question. Would you be willing to uh, encourage your students as they're approaching their home to slow down on Sawyer Road? Where oh, I absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it tends to, to avoid the deer, if anything road. else. Um, <clears throat> yes, absolutely. I mean, I, 
I should mention that if I was to do cooking classes in my home uh, in the small groups complying with the zoning board, um, I would be sending a confirmation to each of these people that were to sign up for the class and I can include whatever instructions I need. I would definitely be including parking instructions and certainly neighborhood in con instructions as well since I do live in a residential neighborhood um, and, and that's not a problem. Good. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comment. We'll now open the floor to any public comment. Uh, if there's anybody in the audience who would like to speak in favor of the applicant, please come forward, state your name and address, please. Hearing none. Are there any in the audience who have any comments in opposition to the applicant? Please come forward at this time. Hearing none, we'll close the public forum portion of the meeting and have discussion by the board. Is my initial thoughts. It's a very low impact to the uh, to the neighborhood. Uh, for the as for the writing part, you can <clears throat> entirely remove that from consideration because it really doesn't involve. Um, as she pointed out, it doesn't involve anyone coming to the home. Anybody could do that with or without a permit. Um, <clears throat> I sense that the applicant has a good sense of uh, of what the ordinance requires in terms of family or running a business out of a home and uh, I don't see it as having a great deal of impact in the neighborhood as witnessed by opposition to it or lack thereof. Thank you. The uh, seven criteria of the home business appear to be satisfied. Uh, one question that I, uh, Ms. Galino, I may ask you to come back to the, to the board, uh, to the podium if you would. Uh, the one uh, concern I have is the, is the length of hours into the evening, uh, six days a week. Uh, I, I personally would feel more comfortable if, if, if there was some effort made to, to uh, abbreviate those hours, maybe in the weekend time, or to limit it to a certain number, not specific days, but a limited number of days per week. If, if, could you address your, uh, if you could address that and still uh, feel comfortable with your business? Mm -hmm. um, if I needed to limit it to, uh, when you say a number of days per week as opposed to Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we're saying something like four days per week is what uh, you're thinking? Correct. And, and is it, you mentioned that uh, to go into the evening, was important in view of those people who work. Mm -hmm. uh, Saturday uh, doesn't seem to be an issue uh, to go late into the evening as far as people who work, uh, for example. That is correct. So certainly Saturday could be limited uh, to during the day. My intention is not actually to do cooking classes on Saturday night, um, as you can probably imagine. I was just trying to be accommodating and also, again, because it was an application, I felt it important to give full disclosure. Um, so I wanted to give myself the option of that. On a logistical note, um, it's very difficult to teach a cooking class or private instruction on a Monday, for example, because most deliveries uh, from the Boston market, which is where most of our food supply comes out of for Maine that's not locally grown, um, that actually doesn't come to Portland until Monday afternoon. And as a cooking teacher for 15 years, the number of cooking classes I can count on one hand that I've taught on a Monday, 
most of my cooking classes occur tuesday to thursday actually but friday would be included in that also because the better food delivery is here and that's an important part of teaching is using quality ingredients so um if i needed to limit per day a number of days i could say i could do it within five days knowing that i probably wouldn't be teaching cooking classes on a monday and could you limit the saturday hours i could uh, as a condition we would i would feel comfortable with that if, okay if that would not negatively impact your business and it doesn't sound like it would no i don't believe it will impact my business negatively so are you thinking something like nine to six on saturday uh, during the daytime if uh five or five five maybe that would be fine nine to five on saturday mm -hmm. any comments from the board i find that agreeable did did you resolve the evening time? Uh, you stated that typically it's six to nine. Correct. And it sounded like you put till ten as a as a buffer. Correct. Uh, but it's your intent to to end this at nine o'clock. Is that correct? Right. Definitely. Uh, I don't know. What, uh, any comments? Um, no, I. You know, in all honesty, I, I feel, based on uh, the discussion and the, and the comments of Mrs. Galena, that the, that the impact from this business um, in that particular neighborhood um, would, would be minimal in any event. And uh, um, I, I personally would, other than uh, to agree with, uh, with Dr. Chavis that, that uh, to not extend it into a, 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 a very late hour is a, is a good idea uh, and not too late on Saturday. But I, I think that the impact generally isn't going to be that great okay. where you live. I, I, I believe that's true. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say I believe that's, you know, certainly true. And I'm willing if you feel more, if the board feels more comfortable to say, I believe I said six days a week in the application, if you felt more comfortable saying five, because I know I'm not going to do them on Monday, um, I'm fine with that also. Five days per week. Saying five days per week. That's fine. If that makes... No, I, I don't have a problem with, with the Saturday. It was it was the, the evening hours that, mm -hmm. that possibly could be addressed and you did address that so thank you you're welcome thank you no further discussion we'll proceed to voting um, mr smith the conditions should they be stated prior or at the at the end of voting I think it makes no difference probably the conditions up front before you vote would be appropriate okay uh, based on the discussion if we could state for the record the conditions being that the applicant has agreed to have no more than five customers uh, at any given time and on any single day uh, to attend her residence for home business purposes. Um, and she also agreed to limit the Saturday hours until uh, I believe we agreed upon 5 p.m. on Saturday. Two conditions. I have one Yes, ma'am. I just want to clarify, I believe that you said five cars, no more than five cars, because that would be 10 trips per day. That's correct. Right. So then it, that's not five customers necessarily. If someone comes in a car with someone else, there's two people. So technically, there could be more than five people in a cooking class. That's correct. OK, just that's, checking. That's correct. We, I, I stated customer. I should have stated trips. The, the ordinance specifically addresses uh, vehicular trips per day. Okay. And that must be limited to five per day. Okay. On any given day, at, at any given time or throughout the day is how the reads. And it would also include 
Yeah, I know you stated that you wouldn't be receiving, or you don't anticipate receiving deliveries, but it would include those vehicles if that were the case. For instance, if a UPS truck during the holidays drops off a box, it does have an impact as well. If it's for my business, not if it's for my personal use. For your business. Right. Right. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So to clarify that condition, uh, as per the ordinance, uh, the uh, in as a clarif clarification of the applicant's uh, application, uh, she agreed that the ordinance uh, will be followed with a maximum of five vehicle trips per day. Uh, number one, the proposed use will not create hazardous traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in the vicinity. All in favor? It's three in favor, zero against. Condition number two, the proposed use will not create unsanitary conditions by re reason of sewage disposal, admissions to the air, or other aspects of its design or operation. All those in favor? All those opposed? Sorry, three in favor, zero opposed. Item number three, the proposed use will not adversely affect the value of adjacent properties. Those in favor? Three in favor, zero opposed. Condition four, the proposed site plan and layout are compatible with adjacent property uses and, the, and with the comprehensive plan. Those in favor? Three in favor, zero opposed. Condition number five, the design and external appearance of any proposed building will constitute a, an attractive and compatible design to the neighborhood, although it need not have a similar design appearance or architecture. Uh, all those in favor? Three in favor, zero opposed. Uh, and the condition prescribed, with the condition prescribed, the five elements of the ordinance have all passed. And may I have a motion? Therefore, the permit is approved. May I have a motion, please? Uh, I'll move that the uh, conditional use permit uh, be granted to uh, Barbara Galena to operate a home business conditioned upon those uh, um, items uh, mentioned by the chair prior to the uh, conclusions. All those in favor? Uh, the motion is passed. Permit is granted. Thank you. Item number two on the agenda is to hear the request of Theodore Chevrolet's MD of 18 Smugglers Cove Road, tax map U10, lot 42, for a conditional use permit to operate a home business, specifically psychiatric consultation. As with four <coughs> members on the board, a simple majority of members, voting members, will be required, and that would be, in this case, three of four board voting members. Um, Dr. Chevrolet, or your representative, please come forward, introduce yourself, and present your application. And I hope I'm pronouncing the name correctly. That's quite good. My name is Chevrolet, and I'm Susan Chevrolet, and this is Chevrolet, and I've spoken to some of the neighbors on the telephone. Um, my husband and I are considering purchasing the house. It hasn't been done from the Curtises. And we are moving up here. Uh, yeah. And if you would speak 
louder. I will, I Thank will, you. and I'll speak into this. My name is Susan Chevrier, Dr. Chevrier, Teo Chevrier. My husband could not come, uh, and um, I agreed to come for him. Um, we are in the process of trying to purchase the house from the Curtises, and we've been on the street several times. Um, we are m moving from New York up here because we have children in the area, and we don't like being so far away from both our children, our children and our grandchildren. We, um, my husband has had in Scarsdale, New York, a psychiatric practice for 42 years in our home. We've brought up five children there. We've never had a problem. It's in the neighborhood. My husband does not only see patients at home. He's affiliated with Cornell University that has a hospital near us, and he's in the process of getting his main license, his medical license. It's a horribly long procedure, so God knows when that will happen. Um, his, one of our daughters is a doctor at Maine Med here in Portland, and we've spoken with her a great deal about doing this, and she feels very strongly that good psychiatric care is lacking in the area. He's not interested in working a lot. He's older, a bit older than me, but he is passionate about what he does, and he would like to continue doing that. Um, as at home, he has seen patients um, just several hours a day. Usually, currently, it's been three or four days a week because the other days he's at the hospital or he's doing his reading. He also travels a great deal. He teaches in Switzerland twice a year, which is his um, home country. He's from Switzerland. And so his focus is not only to seeing the patients. Um, we felt that the house could work. We see the street is quiet, and we don't want to cause any disturbance. That's not our idea. It's only the two of us. Um, we could have two children in that house. There, is, there are two bedrooms. Um, and they could drive, too, I suppose. And that could create perhaps more a challenging situation than if it was just the two of us. There is room in the driveway for cars. We've done that at our house. And as he sees patients and has a 15-minute break to take notes and go to the bathroom or whatever he needs, get a drink of coffee, he's able, a patient leaves and another one comes. He doesn't keep people waiting. He never has. He works on Swiss precision time, which is not always great, but that's the way he operates. Um, he's quite... Uh, regular about what he does. Um, we would never want to come to a street where we wouldn't be welcome. So if this is a problem, of course, we would have to give this up. I wouldn't want it to be a problem. There's a, a, a room. I'm not sure if the Curtises did it. Yes, they added a little addition onto the front. And there's a little area and a lavatory and then a den. And that's what he would use. It's a separate entrance. There's no sign at home except his name on the door. That's all we would have. Um, and I presume he'll be teaching at the hospital here. That's what his intention will be. He's not looking to build a practice that's extensive. That's not his interest at this age. He does do a good bit of writing, too. So I can answer any questions. Um, the people he sees are not drugged. They're not crazy. I could never have brought up five children with an office at home if that was the case. It's, it's not that kind of a situation. There are people very frequently who are having a problem and want to talk it out. He believes in good therapy. He does, he's not a doctor who prescribes drugs and drugs. That's not the case. I have lived with it comfortably, so I have no reason not to. Okay. Thank you. Um, open it to the board for questions. I'll start out then. Um, you have, your husband has requested uh, uh, hours, I believe, from. I think we, we had agreed 8.30 to 4.30. And normally what he would do is see like three patients and then leave and go to the hospital for the rest of the day for work or group them 
or see one in the morning and go out and come home, or one in the morning and do his writing, and then see one at 3 o'clock. How long would each patient visit be? Typically? 45 minutes. 45 minutes? Uh, these patients, would they be referred? How would your husband obtain these patients? Um, we know a number of people here whom we have been meeting in the times. We, we go up to Vinyl Haven um, in the summers, which is how we fell in love with Maine. And we have lots of friends there and some friends who live down here. We know people. They know him and they know his style and his sincerity. And I think we know two school psychologists, I think through other doctors is normally, from what our daughter tells us, she's called people, referred to psychiatrists, and they don't return the calls. And she's very upset with the care. So I guess maybe our daughter, I don't know whether that'll be kosher to, to refer to your own father, but certainly some of her colleagues whom we've met during the times she's lived here. Normally, psychiatric referrals come from other doctors. They'll come from a pediatrician if someone wants to bring their child. And he works with children occasionally. Usually it would be with a parent and a child together because it's really a system. Um, so the referrals are going to come from other physicians, I would think a school psychologist in that way. And then if he's teaching, which is what he loves to do, that's what he's done through Cornell University for years and years. He's been head of a department, Montefiore. He was head of the child psychiatry there. Um, and a lot of the referrals will come from other doctors who've seen children. You said your daughter works at Maine Med. She's a physician? She's a physician, yeah. And is she in a related type field? She's a family physician. She works in Scarborough with two other doctors. Scar I think it's Scarborough Family Physicians. And then she's affiliated with Maine Med. And they uh, like to discuss cases together. Would your husband's uh, practice involve a nurse? at any time? No, no one. There's no one else. He just takes his own notes. He writes uh, his correspondence. In, in regards to medications, uh, are those, how are those used and are, they, are those used on site? No, a prescription is given and a person goes to the pharmacy and gets the prescription, but he's not a big medication person. I mean, he believes in a combination of treatment and medication. I guess there are some people who use medication. No, I, I realize prescription. Yeah, but it isn't that heaven. he Are there he any medications uh, no, no. to be stored on site? No, just our own household. No, no medication. Uh, you say your husband is not yet licensed? No, not yet, because it takes six months. Uh, if he doesn't get his license for any reason. And from what we've asked from other doctors, there's no reason to believe he won't get it. It's a question of going through the process. His education is in, is in, Swiss, is in Switzerland in French and German, and he had to translate all the papers into these languages, from, into English, and then he sent it all to a federal organization that reviews all this. So that's ta that takes a long time. Then he sends the papers to, to Maine for the licensing. Uh, Obviously, if he doesn't get licensed, he doesn't practice. That's, he's taking a, a risk. It has been brought to the board's attention that uh, your husband's uh, practice is uh, associated with apotherapy mm -hmm. or the use of, uh, of bees for medical use. Mm -hmm. Can you please uh, explain uh, if this will be involved in his practice? Well, that's not part of psychiatric practice at all, and that's not a, a legal, um, it's not recognized in this country. 
um, apotherapy as illegal. It's recognized as something that a beekeeper, we have beehives, and we would have a couple of hives there probably. It seemed if they face out over the ocean, there will be no problem. There's a very secluded area where they can fly out. And that's something that is done. I have arthritis, and he stings me with the bees. I know this sounds very strange, but you can read about this, and it's been an absolute wonder for me. He does that for other people. But that's not psychiatry at all. There's no licensing involved with that. So it really doesn't have to do with that practice. It, he doesn't do it as a, as a physician, since it's not a recognized um, um, in this country as, as, as a reputable form of medicine. It's like many alternative practices are not recognized. So that's not part of what this is. Well, it, it has been brought to our attention that he has uh, written and made presentations of that's the use, uh, use of bees Right. and their associated products in medicine. Correct. He has been an advocate of this. Absolutely. He has taught that to people, yes. Uh, one of the conditions of the, of the home business is uh, regarding item number seven, there shall, shall be no outdoor storage of equipment or materials. Um, if bees are to be used as part of his business, then that would necessarily be considered outdoor storage of equipment or materials. Well, um, he doesn't charge for doing that. We don't consider that a business because there's no money exchanged in that. So it's not a business. Um, the storage of all equipment is in the garage or in the basement. What's outside is a beehive. It's a living thing. It isn't a storage. It's um, a wooden box. Um, I, I, but it also is not part of the business in that it's not a money, there's no money exchanged for that. So, you know, it's, it's the psychiatry which, I, I'm not so I don't sure. know how to distinguish that for you. I'd be glad to tell you more, but. I'll, I'll ask maybe the other board members to help me with that. Uh, I'd be glad if to. a and and Mr. Smith, if if a uh, customer or client or patient comes to your house and and uh, uh, B or B products are used with the patient, whether they pay for that or not, I would that it initially appears to me as to be part of the business. Uh, would, well. Does anyone else have any comments? Well, I, just, I guess I have the question, is it, would it be a, um, uh, a condition that you could live with um, to not have the apotherapy as part of the consultations? It's uh, not part of the psychiatric consultation. Um, let me tell you a little, I know it must be very confusing. Um, he was a beekeeper for years, for 35 years we've had bees in our backyard in Scarsdale where we live, with neighbors all around us. Actually, not as great a site as this where they can go over the ocean in the back, so they don't... But... Um, the prevailing winds are from the ocean in. Okay. But, so the bees will be blown in. It, excuse me, we, we will... We'll, certainly give you your chance to come to the podium and make comments. Yeah. Thank you. Um, the, it's hard for me to, people, psychiatric patients don't come for apotherapy, they come for psychiatry, they come for psychiatric consultation. Um, if he's not allowed to have B, the other thing is not a regulated activity. In Scarsdale, we were legally, what we had with the bees was brought up by a neighbor who questioned it, and we came to a zoning board of appeals for it and in our own village. And um, I guess over the 35 years, we've developed a large contingent of very interested people who liked very much what we did. So we had tremendous support, except for the one neighbor who had a question. And it turned out that they said at our zoning board of appeals that this was a hobby. This is not a business. We're not selling something. 
the people are not paying for a service. So I'm a little confused as to, I certainly will answer this, anything you want to know about this, but it's not part of the application for the psychiatric consultation office. And I, but I, I'm I may inter why is it part, why has it been included with the application? I didn't include it. It, 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 came, it came into the office and, was, and, and was, uh, the office was asked to copy for the members for, for their information only. I, I think we're, when this is open for public inquiry, I think we're going to hear I, some I, people who have some concerns, but I, I think I understand what you're saying. Yeah, I think and, and, you're, I, this, is not, this is not in any way part of the psychiatric <laughs> therapy that your husband would provide. And I think that's what, that's what you've got to establish, and if you establish that, it's a non-issue in relation I, to this. I believe that's if people she's are uncomfortable with the other item, I would be glad to meet with anybody who is. I don't want to come to, to that street which is absolutely, you know, a lovely street. I've met a couple of you already. So I do not want to come where we're not wanted or where what we do is not wanted. That's not my interest. As but the psychiatric, I would like that to be... In your husband's practice yes. in Scarsdale, yes. um, did he, for any reason, utilize bees as part of psychotherapy? No. No. And we went through for in our business. In a, there, we didn't have to go for the psychiatric office to a, any kind of a, a, you could just make your application and show that you met all those requirements, and then you were granted the permit for the home business. We didn't have to come to a zoning board for it. But we had that permission there also for the, the psychiatric. The only reason I mention that is yes. because uh, of it was brought to our attention I appreciate as part that. of medicine, and one of the requirements is that there shall be no outside storage. And if this is part of it, then yeah, this is yeah. disallowed. You yeah, state yeah. that it is not, so we'll accept it as that. Fine. Fine. Did you fill out the application yourself? He did some and I did some, yeah. There is a question. It says, current average daily traffic on the street, and in it, Whoever, whoever, whichever of you answered that question, you put NA as in what I would believe is non-applicable. Yeah. How did you arrive at that conclusion? Because I spoke with Bruce um, Smith about that, and he guided me that if there was not going to be, um, we didn't know the average traffic on the street, which is very low. And today I went to see the house, and I saw the school bus stop out on the main road, and the kids walk in, three children. And then I, I know there's very little traffic. There were cars parked today on the street, some in the driveway. But we couldn't establish the traffic there. And Bruce said that if it's less than the 10, which it certainly would be, we didn't have if to you, give that number. If you look at the next question, you can go with whichever is larger. And if the 10 vehicle trips are more larger than the average count, there's no sense to do the average count. Mm -hmm. if, if indeed she wanted more, vehicle trips and wanted to establish more vehicle trips based on the average daily traffic count, then she would have to supply that information. Okay. Ma'am, will, will you require any on-street parking for your patients? No, they'll park in the driveway um, with the time, the 15 minutes between. They'll park behind my husband's car, that will be told when he makes an arrangement with a patient to come, he would give directions and say park on the left, behind the left garage and they'll park there. And that's that. If for some reason they would block my car, I can wait 15 minutes. I'm not on some timetable where I have to run out. But that's never been a problem at home with the driveway. So. The, the other uh, notable aspect of, of access to your house is the narrowness of, of the driveway. I, I assume that that's uh, Smuggler's Cove ends at the circle area, and, and the portion that extends off of that to reach your driveway is, is probably a private road or private street, yeah, and it's quite from, narrow. Yeah, from what I understand, the first nine houses are on the road, and then the other part is... Mr. Toys at the end, and then people who 
we rent the house, the Tolford's across the street from us, and then us. Our driveway itself is rather wide, too wide, actually. I'd like to get rid of half of it, it's so wide. Yeah. But the driveway coming in is, I mean, the road coming in is, it's a 20-foot a, a wide, it's a two-lane road coming in there. It's not, I don't think it's... Any other questions from board members? Ma'am, and as I understand it, the um, no, you're not going to have any signage other, on, other than the, um, the house number on the house. The house number, and then maybe on the door it has the name of our name. That's, that's what we have at home now. We have no reason to change that. I mean, he doesn't advertise or make, this is not something you make a deal of. And your husband, in your husband's practice, will have a specific entry dedicated to the business. Yes, there's one. There is that existing door. I think that I put a labeled it for him on that photo. That's separate, and I use the front door, or there's a door around the back I can use too. <clears throat> and does that that enters directly into his office? That will, yeah. There's a little hallway there with a lavatory. There's room for three chairs there, and then there's a door into a small consultation room. There's not you know, room to see large groups or anything. It's just all he needs at this point of his life. He does travel. <coughs> I will add, and I know I'm not trying to complicate things for you, but for people whom I'm sure are here concerned about the apitherapy, which is not the issue, he travels for that a great deal. And that's, he is away usually four months a year. So his patient load is often just a consultation. People who are not in treatment but come for how to proceed or to be given to another psychiatrist or for short-term treatment because of the traveling that he does do. Thank you. Uh, I, wanted, I want you to understand we're asking you all these questions because it is our charge that any home business meets the criteria and, and uh, the, the relevant questions that we have asked were all based on portions of the criteria. Right. That I have possibly no, were. no problem with that and I, I know that and I also am sympathetic to the apotherapy part which I understand and you understand but if that raises an issue I would be perfectly welcome to meet with these people afterwards because that's not in your charge okay but, but we have to iron that out too again i only mention that there's there there is no statement in the ordinance regarding uh, keeping beehives the, that. Uh, there is a statement in the ordinance that no outdoor storage of equipment or materials so if right. used as part of the practice yeah. it's not yeah it, uh, we cannot approve it uh, along that line your permit along that line right. and that's the only We're reason that that is mentioned uh, any other questions thank you We'll now open the floor to public comment. Uh, if there are any, mem any people in the audience that have supportive statements in, uh, in regards to uh, supporting the applicant uh, for a conditional use permit, please come to the podium at this time. And if you would, state your name and address, please, sir. Paul Hanley, 17 Smugglers Cove Road. I live uh, right at the cul-de-sac, uh, which uh, is uh, a very busy place in the summertime. Smugglers Cove Road is a very fascinating name, and nine out of 10 tourists go on Shore Road and come in and check out Smuggler's Cove Road, just the name of it. It is a busy spot. They come in and then they back around and there's a lot of maneuvering and, uh, and the oil truck is delivering an oil load and the mailman comes to the four box station 
right beyond the cul-de-sac. We do have traffic jams, believe it or not. Uh, my concern is the traffic. Now, I've lived there for 13 years now. And uh, true, on a day like today, there are very few people there. But it is an amazingly busy place. And it isn't the traffic moving back, it's people trying to get out of there. Uh, so my concern is that this not add to the traffic situation. Um, Excuse me, are you speaking in favor of? I'm speaking, just giving you the facts to consider. I think you want the impact of, of this. Now, okay. Apparently, uh, this is not going to create a very heavy additional amount of traffic. But I, I think you have to live there and see what goes on day after day and year round. Uh, this cul-de-sac in the wintertime, I have the biggest snow pile in Cape Elizabeth. As a matter of fact, the uh, good people come once or twice a year and take it off my lawn. Uh, but that uh, reduces the cul-de-sac to a pretty small uh, area during the winter. And uh, we do have a, a, a traffic problem because of people maneuvering. I have a stone wall <clears throat> in my front yard, uh, which is part of this cul-de-sac. And uh, that gets quite a lot of abuse, people banging into it. Even the good people of the if it was a public works take a whack at it once in a while. Uh, but my concern in this, in this whole discussion is simply the, I don't want to see much more traffic out there. Thank you. Let me ask you, now you are at 17. That stone wall is not actually in front of your house. Is, am I correct? You're, uh, the stone that, wall is, is kind of a retaining wall for my front lawn. For your front yard, uh, front lawn? Yeah. Okay. Does I'm your driveway, is your driveway directly, is your house directly across from the applicant is what I'm trying to establish? My house is, uh, diagonally across, uh, they, they are slightly closer to the point. So I believe I'm, it's I'm number the, 19 is direct. I'm the last house on, the, on Smuggler's Cove Road before your extension. Any question? Thank you. Any, uh, anyone else in favor? I don't believe there were any. Uh, am I correct? Uh, those, anybody in the audience have comments in opposition to the applicant, please come forward. My name is Leah Osborne. I live at 16 Smugglers Cove Road, which abuts the property that they're buying. And uh, my main concern was, of course, the traffic and the parking. I live on the opposite side of the street from Mr. Hanley. And we do have lots of cars come down there and turn around. We have children on the street, and you have to be very careful when you're driving around. Watch out for those children. And the uh, Tolford house is the one that's directly across the street from the property. They have a stone wall, and several times people backing out from their driveway have hit that stone wall, and it's had to be repaired several times. <coughs> so that is one of the problems that you have to consider. And then about the beehive, I was wondering, would it be possible for your husband to maintain a beehive at one of the farms? nearby. I know someone else had done that in the past. Uh, we've established that that is not part of the business. Uh, well, it's and, still and a we, problem in the neighborhood. <coughs> that's With correct. With the wind, prevailing wind coming in from the ocean, they would be blown right up in my yard, as well as in the next yard to me where the children are. 
we are here to hear only the conditional use permit regarding the, the home business. All right. And that's well, all that we should the, be addressing uh, at this The parking and the traffic is, was my main concern, <coughs> as well as the type of paper <coughs> that's being seen. I don't want anyone in there that's going to be a threat to the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, anyone else in the audience to speak in opposition? Um, my name is Susan Mitchell. I live at 8 Smugglers Cove Road. Would you raise the microphone up a bit? Thank you. Is that better? Yes, ma'am. Can you repeat your name, please? Susan Mitchell, 8 Smugglers Cove Road. Um, Smugglers Cove Road, I, I don't know if you've driven down that street. It, it, it's a very narrow short, dead-end road. It's approximately 500 feet. Um, the only people who really come down Smuggler's Cove would be the residents and workmen that are coming to um, our homes. The, um, the houses, it's very dense. The lots are small, open. The sight distance on Smuggler's Cove is very limited. There's a blind corner right by my house. I'm the second house in on the left. There's a bend in the road, uh, which empties quickly into a cul-de-sac where it's very hard to turn around. I know people have um, spoken about that. Um, one radius doesn't do it. You end up having to back into Mr. Hanley's driveway. Um, there are children on the street. They are playing ball in the street. They ride bikes. There are grandchildren that visit regularly that are on the street. People walk in the middle of the road, not, we've never had to really get on the sides of the street at Smothers Cove because it's, uh, as I say, it's really, um, even though people may come down in the summer, tourists come down in the summer, that is the problem that we do have. But living there, we, we live in our yards, which are small, but we also, um, the children have used the streets for recreation, the street for recreation. Um, when people come off of Shore Road and they don't know the road that they're about to drive down. They come around the corner very quickly. They stop abruptly after um, my house because they can see that the road doesn't go anywhere. It's only 500 feet. So it's, it's, um, it's a very abrupt, I see them come wheeling around into Smuggler's Cove and then they can't believe it, the road stops. There's a cul-de-sac and then there's the dead end. Um, it concerns me that people who are unfamiliar with our street would be coming down. Um, the application states uh, 8.30, 4.30, which are business hours, three to four days a week, uh, potentially. I know businesses can grow when someone applies uh, for, this, for these 8.30 to 4.30, three or four days a week. I have to presume that a business could grow. That could be a potential uh, traffic consideration. Um, we have to consider that. Parking is um, in the best conditions and is not good. The driveway um, of the Curtis house is a two-car driveway. Um, it's a problem in the winter when the snow piles up. Uh, people have already referred to that. It's hard to even um, maneuver your car down the street. Two cars could never pass on Smuggler's Cove Road, even, even uh, in um, any, any season, actually. It's not too late, it's one. So it would be very hard for two cars to be abreast in the middle of the road, uh, on the road together. Um, I don't see this as, as being um, compatible with a residential neighborhood. Um, I am very concerned about the traffic. Uh, I've spoken to many of the neighbors that they're concerned about the, the 40 trips per week that could potentially come into the neighborhood. People who do not know the street, don't know the sight distance, aren't familiar with um, the area. And um, I know that you said uh, not to uh, consider the bees, but you may be looking at an application for psychiatric um, treatment, but also there would be, um, I think she did say that there would be participating in appy therapy. So they may not be 
applying for that in this application however that would be happening on the premises so i'm not sure how to say i don't know what that connection means i i have to think about that because i know the application states one thing but um that would be happening uh fifty thousand bees are in one hive two hives could be coming into the neighborhood i know Peter Rich did give uh, me permission to say that when he moved into that same house 30 years ago, he was a beekeeper and he put his bees out in Jordan's farm because he thought it was an inappropriate thing to introduce into the neighborhood. So we may be talking about one thing, but there's also going to be another thing that will compound um, uh, this issue, whether it's part of it, uh, whether it's a free um, consultation and, and uh, something that comes out of the, the med medical treatment. I understand what you have in front of you, but I also need to draw some kind of um, connection and some, some kind of um, parallel there with what may potentially Regarding that happen. last comment, though, we have to take the applicant at their word that, that they will not be using that for medical purposes. And, and, uh, for that's psychiatric been, purposes. That's been stated. Sorry? For psychiatric purposes, uh, the, the use of bees. Yes, you said for medical purposes. I, I, I think that she said that they they do use that for medical purposes, but that they would not be using it for psychiatric purposes. Is that what she said? I that's. What she I'm said saying. it would not be used in in her husband's practice. Or in the practice. In, in regards, I don't know the exact wording. Right. She said it would not be used in in regards to the uh, clients well, who would come. To their home. It, it would, but, but in fact, it would be happening on, on the street. Um, and that, I think, is a problem because bees would not be going over the ocean. They would be coming into our very small neighborhood. We're a very isolated street. We, we have no circulation, obviously, but we also don't have any buffer roads. We, we are it. We are the only road that's paved um, from here to um, Pond Cove, where the ocean comes up to the road there. So we're, we're an isolated street with very limited open space. So I don't think we can help but be concerned about that. Um, so I, I just am very concerned about the traffic, uh, the sight distance, the, the children and grandchildren in the street, the amount of um, cars that would, would potentially be coming down as the business grows, as referrals are made. Um, I have no doubt that um, it's nice when people can keep their hand in, in their business as, as time goes on but I just don't see this compatible with a residential uh, neighborhood and one that is as dense as this one is. Um, Ms. Mitchell, yes. Mitchell, I have a question for you. Yes. Are there sidewalks on the street? Oh, no. No sidewalks? Oh, no. This is a very narrow road, very narrow. Two cars cannot fit. It's a one-car narrow road. It's a two-way it, street, though, right, obviously. It's too late if somebody will pull over to the side. Pull way up. You have to pull it up on someone's lawn. Uh, um, it, it, it's, it's a very small little um, road. And it's, um, like I say, only residents and workmen are usually on this road. But in the summer, sightseers are fascinated with the name, will come down and then find themselves that they have to turn around back up and kind of is on bottleneck. Is on street parking allowed on the street? Do people park on the street? I understand what you're saying. Yeah, it's a, it's a very private street. We'll give you a chance to, to have further comments. Uh, the question was re raised regarding on street parking, and I believe it was clarified to mean do people park on the street? No, people don't park on the street. Um, they would, if they did, they would be blocking half the road. So you, if two cars want to pass, one has to go up in the lawn. Excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, I'd like to ask oh. you one question. That's all right. <coughs> I'm just trying to clarify the nature of your opposition here. Is it, is it um, are, are you opposed to um, a home business on Smuggler's Cove generally, uh, or is it, is it the, um, totally the, the impact 
on traffic if if there were some limitation on the number of visits less than is being suggested here, would that in any way allay your fears as to the traffic conditions on the road? I think that I'm very concerned about the traffic because they've applied for the 8.30 to 4.30 business hours and three to four days a week, and the potential growth of a business could mean that they could potentially use it to the max, which they are applying for. I'm concerned about that. We just don't have that kind of traffic on the street, and I can't really see that happening on this dead-end street. I think businesses in general do devaluate properties. I'm sure there are businesses where people don't have traffic come to their home, but in this case, there could be people under stress coming down the street. They don't know the area. They don't know the kids are in the middle of the road. I don't know, but I just think that if you've driven down this street, you really can't imagine any increase in volume, and these would not be people that know the area. They wouldn't be familiar with what might be the concerns of driving down a very short dead-end road with children, grandchildren. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Any other members of the audience like to make comments in opposition? My name is Catherine Bacostow at 1 Smuggler's Cove Road. What number, please? One. Number one. So on the corner of Shore Road and Smuggler's across from the Hobbs and the Mitchells. And your name again, please? Catherine Bacostow. Actually, my mother, Louise Bacostow, is the owner of the house, but I've been living there and wanted to speak to this point. I think Sue Mitchell spoke very articulately about the concerns, and I would just reiterate that I think traffic is a problem, potentially. And there's something that seems kind of counterintuitive to me, and maybe I don't understand the 2% versus 10 trips per day. It's the larger of the two, so that obviously on a street like this where there are 11 houses, two of the houses only have one car in them, and so maybe there are 22 trips, maybe 44, I don't know, maybe 40, and not a lot of traffic from the residents. Ten more trips is a huge percentage, so it just kind of runs counterintuitive to me that where 10 becomes such a dominant percentage of the traffic that could take place on the street. So just to kind of raise that and understand that I think is important. And again, I think Sue said it quite well. It's clearly a residential neighborhood, very narrow, and I am on the corner that she's talking about where cars could come flying around and a child could be there playing. And again, because these are patients who won't be coming on a regular basis, maybe coming for a consult, there will be a lot of turnover in numbers of people, so not people who would have a great deal of familiarity. And I guess I would also reiterate what Sue said about wondering, once you have a business on a street like this, what could potentially be the impact for the value of the houses with an increase in traffic and just a change in feel for the street. And it's a charming street that doesn't feel at all as if there are businesses there. It's a quiet residential street in Cape Elizabeth, Maine. So that's, I guess, what I'd like to say. Any questions? No. My name is Tom Toy. I live at 20 Smuggler's Cove Road. It's the last house on the street. Is it appropriate to ask questions of the committee, the board? I'm not familiar with the ordinance. And I guess I was, I did a little research on apotherapy and 
very little research. I'm not an expert by any means, but uh, Dr. Chevrolet is certainly a um, the authority on it and, and noted worldwide. And um, what I read l led me to believe that the beekeeping portion is, uh, while it may sound like a hobby uh, or a, or a sideline that's not related to the psychiatric practice, when I did some research and it showed what kind of therapy this bees were, uh, bee stings or bee venom was was capable of doing. It was a uh, skin uh, like a eczema. Uh, uh, there were there were. Um, let, let me interrupt you. Uh, we appreciate your research and comments, but we must take the applicant at their word that this is not involved in in their customer base, their client base. And, and, and we, we, well, we questioned the, the applicant's wife, uh, the applicant's representative who is his wife. She has stated that this will not be involved in his client base. We must take them for their word on this and, uh, uh, and, and, and leave it at that. So this is not an issue at this time. Well, I guess the point I wanted to make was that one of the uses is for psychiatric treatment of depression. And I, I guess that was the, the connection that bothered me the most, was that it didn't feel like um, that little hobby um, was unrelated to the psychiatric practice. And that was my, my concern. Um, and I guess under conditional uses, um, those were the questions I wanted to ask of the board. Um, if you grant conditional use, do you have a means by which uh, violations can be reported so that if there are uh, observed excesses, and, and my thinking is products being generated from the, the bee venom uh, uh, being sold so that their UPS trucks or FedEx trucks are causing traffic on the street. Um, I, I guess that if that became an issue, are we, do we have a means by which we can? Um... Let me answer that as, as chair, and then I'll pass the, the further responses to the code enforcement officer, if I may. If there is a violation that is noted to take place, uh, that must be uh, registered either by firsthand knowledge, observation of code enforcement, code enforcement officer, or someone who observes the violation uh, calls and informs the code enforcement officer. So yes, there is a mechanism. Uh, the, the code enforcement officer does not patrol the neighborhoods in, in search of violation. Uh, so he either needs to see it or be reported. And I'll pass this on to Mr. Smith. Do you have any? That's exactly true. There, there is a mechanism. So there's a mechanism. You can call to answer your question, there's a mechanism. Let me ask a question, and hopefully it doesn't open a Pandora's box here, but can you maybe qualify what the reservations are about the bees? Is it their possible use in therapy, or is it their possible presence in the neighborhood? Uh, initially, I, I met the Cherbelais and, and the, the psychiatric practice two or three visits a day. I had no problem with. I'm, I'm affected in the sense that I have to pass by their, their driveway to get to my driveway, so traffic and parking is always an issue, but that didn't bother me initially. But um, I guess after this discovery of, of this uh, products that, that are created with this, that that is going to create a business that is actually retailing products there, I guess, more so than just psychiatric practice. And if, and if it was I guess conditional use on three psychiatric visits per day, I wouldn't have any 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 opposition to it. But if if it's a business that starts to grow so that people are coming down to buy products, uh, this this is an alternative medicine, and I don't know what kind of following it might have. Uh, but so if you had to weigh the two issues, basically public safety of someone keeping bees in the neighborhood versus an additional volume to this home business if it were to be granted. Is it the additional volume to the business that is of a greater concern? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Sir, 
One question. What about the, are you concerned about the, um, although I'm not sure that this is within the scope of the application today, but it doesn't sound like there's a safety concern vis regarding your safety concerning the apotherapy and the presence of... No, I don't have a, a safety concern. Okay. It, you share a driveway with the applicant and, and the person. Right, the right away. Right. Uh, I would assume that's probably a 20-foot right away or uh, uh, easement. Uh, and I don't know the dimension, but it's it's not wide enough for two cars. Can two park cars pass on that? No, uh, on the right away. Uh, yes, the drive that leads to your house can, and also to the applicant's house. Can two cars pass side by side on that? No. No, they cannot. No. And and. In the summer, when there's snow's not an issue, they cannot pass each other. That's correct. They cannot. Today, you could not pass. One one has to stay in their driveway until the other is by. Okay. And th that is only on the where Smuggler's Cove ends in the circle, and and uh, <coughs> it proceeds down your driveway is where we're talking about. Yes. Okay. Yes, we have copies of that also. Yes. Huh? Right. Yes, we have that. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions? So your opposition is, is purely in the sense of... Purely in growth, I think. Of growth beyond uh, conditional use of, of, say, three visits per day, would my, my thought. So... The B issue aside, your your concern is growth beyond three visits per day. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other comments from the audience? My name is uh, John Mitchell, H Smuggers Cove Road. What number, please? Eight. Thank you. Uh, my primary concerns are uh, one of traffic, uh, increased traffic and safety um, in the neighborhood. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with Smuggler's Cove, um, it, it's, I think, somewhat unique. It's, a, it's an old subdivision. Um, it certainly wasn't designed and built uh, with the current subdivision ordinances uh, intact. It's um, a very narrow street. Um, it, it's, it's sort of wide at the entrance, but it very quickly narrows down in front of our house uh, to about 16 or 17 feet wide. Uh, that's, that's extremely narrow. Um, yeah, although it is two lanes, um, you know, a, a, a subdivision road in today's standards is, I think, 25 feet wide. Um, so it is very narrow. There are no sidewalks, no curbing no drainage, uh, the horizontal alignment does not meet today's standards. Uh, there is a blind spot in front of our house, so as you approach down Smuggler's Cove Road, you're hit with a blind spot. Um, you can't see um, beyond um, in front of our house. So I'm, I'm very concerned about the increased traffic in the, in the fact that it not only doesn't meet today's standards for residential use, it certainly does not meet uh, road standards for office or commercial use. And I think that's an important consideration in, in your deliberations. Um, and I'm very concerned about the safety of, of uh, the kids. As my wife mentioned, uh, all of the kids tend to play in the middle of the street. Uh, there are no sidewalks, there are no shoulders. And um, there, are, there are more than three kids on our neighborhood, and, and in our case, there are grandchildren, very small grandchildren. So I'm very concerned about that. Um, if the board would uh, help me understand the, uh, the 2% factor, there are 11 homes on, on the street, 11 times 10, which is the average rule of thumb for a single family home. 11 times 10 is 100, 110 trips per day. 2% of that is 2.2 trips. And the applicant, I, I believe, is proposing five, up to five 
patients a day that's ten trips so it in my correct in that this fire exceeds the two percent max you're correct and and this was recently if I may explain this was changed in December of 2003 the ordinance was amended it we had a number of not a number we had some number of applicants for home businesses that were lived on a cul-de-sac or short dead in the street based on the two percent traffic count depending on the number of houses that were on that street it was clear that those people were at a significant disadvantage rightly or wrongly if you wanted to operate a business on a dead-end street cul-de-sac the odds were stacked against you from a from a two percent traffic count but because the two percent traffic count was based on a three-way street in December the Town Council amended the ordinance and and I am not sure exactly where they obtain their data but I do have a document I'd like to refer to and this is a document published by the Institute of Traffic Engineers and this is the document that the main DOT does DOT does follow and this is entitled accepted traffic engineering methods and it describes a percentage of the daily traffic then there's a paragraph that says for dead-end roads are called the sacks in lieu of a four-hour traffic count they give the criteria for establishing an average annual daily traffic count in lieu of the four-hour traffic count you can simply count the number of houses on the road and multiply by six if it's in a rural setting or by ten if it's in an urban setting for the trip each house generates and so the I can only assume that the Town Council based their modification on this published document that the state of Maine also follows too so that's where the ten per house in an urban setting ten trips per day or five vehicle trip round trips in an urban setting comes from right so we can't look at both we look at one or the other if it's a three-way busy street then we look at two percent if it's a small cul-de-sac and we look at the ten houses a day and the ordinance does provide provision for that so either one is acceptable if it fits either criteria it's acceptable does that explain your yeah it does but my point is that Smuggler's Cove is is a substandard I'm coming from it from a safety point of view from the layout of the roadway is substandard it does not meet the current road standards of your ordinance and in light of that I'm very concerned about the safety aspect of increased number of trips on that roadway thank you thank you any other comments from the audience Miss Chevrolet would you like to respond you would you made an effort earlier and I cut you off if you'd like to respond to the podium at this time I can only say I understand every one of your concerns and I've called some of you I did try to call you Nicholas several times and didn't reach you I do want to understand and I said to my husband if this is a problem for the neighborhood how will we handle it and it's something I think we have to come to grips with if you could address us please I think it's something we have to come to grips with I know this is all very unusual and I think the reason we like this street is for its character and its unusual nature and I understand everything they are saying we've been on the street a half a dozen times it is quiet it is small I think number one I just want to tell mr. toy that 
my husband uses the apitherapy in his work only primarily for arthritis and MS, not for psychiatry. It's not used at all for that. But that's just an aside to point out that it's not part of the psychiatric. The other is an issue I have to deal with with them about. Um, I'm really in a funny place here. I'm speaking for my husband. He will not increase. He's not there to build any, any business. I think his preference would be to see a few patients a day and to teach a few hours. He will be 77 this year. It's not a man who's building a practice. He's at the end of his practice. Um, I think that we, if we were granted this, would make every, every effort. If it became a problem and these people came to us, I think even if we were granted something and you came to us and said it's not working, we would, he would have to get an office elsewhere. It's just, we could not live comfortably in a place where we're not wanted. That is absolutely not our wish to come here for that reason. And we've met some of you who have been absolutely gracious. I don't want to do that. Um, we also have grandchildren. We could have moved in, as I've said, with two children, and it probably would have generated more traffic um, than, than his practice would. I know when our children drove, there was that issue. But we have lived for 42 years also in the neighborhood, and it's never been an issue. And I don't want it to be an issue. Some of you I've met, and it just, oh, at the moment, it didn't seem like an issue. I've been advised of the difficulty with snow, which some of you mentioned very realistically. Those are times probably when the office is closed, when there's a phone call from my husband saying, hey, don't come. You can't come in here. His office, he's not seeing desperate people. It's just never been what he sees. So I don't know what to say, because I want to I have a stake in getting the approval for him, but I also have a stake in living where I'm wanted. I don't want to go, Susan Mitchell has said everything, you're absolutely right. We have little grandchildren, and I want them to play out there too. But children are often not out, you know, he's not gonna see a patient from 8.30 to 4.30, that's not the idea, he'll see two or three, and then he either writes or reads or goes to the hospital. So it's, it's, it's only the three or four patients a day that he wants to see. And if there were hours that were preferable to people, I'm sure he can schedule them that way. That's, but the realism of the stone wall, or what Mr. Hanley says about the, there's a turnaround in front of yours, and then there's the narrow street that Mr. Toy and the Tolfords and us are on, the little, the little ending. It is a place, we, we would have to tell people they have to drive very slowly there. That's part of the directions. Can you control how your delivery people, we don't get FedExes and deliveries, and I'm not a, a shopper and a driver, it's not my interest, I'm a, I like to garden. Professionally, I'm a landscape architect, Mr. Mitchell, so that I happen to know, we all learn things about each other. So I don't know what more to say that I can help you or these people understand. Um, some, I, I think, Mark has met my husband, Mr. Hanley has, and Mr. Toy has. He's terribly quiet, he's very Swiss, and he's not out here to cause any rumpus. So that's all I can say for you. You have to make this decision. I understand their concern about the traffic. That would be mine, and that was my, my concern in move, would be in moving there also, is that we do not disrupt, and I've discussed this with Mr. Smith, that we, keep it to a very minimum. And I think that's what the effort is. Uh, the effort is not to grow a practice. That's Thank you very much. I, that's all I could say. Just Thank a you. point of clarification. Um, I know there's been some concern that the business could grow, but it's clear in the audience that a conditional use may only be expanded in area of function only with the granting of a new conditional use approval by the board. So if there's an approval given, it's, it's, it's to that approval that day, and anything beyond that would have to come back for, for another approval. So that's a kind of important thing to convey. In the sense of expansion? Uh, expansion in function or area, more, custom, you know, more clients than what was approved, or a bigger area. 
so it just can't grow by itself it, it's only approved for what was stipulated the day of of the hearing thank you Chairman. yes are you here to speak in opposition yes i am sir please uh, introduce yourself and state your address It'd be my pleasure my name is Peter Rich, and I live at 7 Smuggler's Cove Road, where we've lived. We've lived on Smuggler's Cove Road for nearly 30 years, and I think we have a fairly good view of, of what the road is like. Uh, it's, its description, I think, uh, John Mitchell spoke well of. It's narrow. There are blind spots driving out of driveways. We live across the street from John, and entering, and rather, leaving our driveways, uh, it's blind. And you have to be very, very careful. And the problem comes, as I view it, from being on the road that length of time, it is not the, deliver, the, uh, the delivery trucks and vehicles, but it is rather the people who come in to see where the road goes, and they speed up, and it's very, very difficult. And, and it is those folks who come in who are not familiar with the road. And that is the safety issue that I speak to. And I think it's important to consider. This is an unusual road. John has spoken of its narrow nature, its blind spots. It is unusual. Children play in it because there are no sidewalks. There are no, it, it is the natural playground. Trikes on it, bikes on it. I ride on it and I have had close encounters with cars coming in rapidly off Shore Road, thinking that the speed on Shore Road can equal that on Smuggler's Cove Road. It can't. And fortunately, there have been no accidents to date, but that's not a precursor to the future. And I'm concerned that folks coming in to a business, and this is a business that's being conducted at the end of the road, will be, no matter what they've been forewarned, and there's nothing in the ordinance that says they have to be forewarned, and they may not be. There's nothing that can keep them from turning the corner at short road speed or close to it and going down that road with blind spots. And that's not good. And, and I think the board ought to be aware of that as a real heavy safety factor. We've lived on the street, we've raised children on the street, and we've had grandchildren on the street. And it's not good. And I leave that with you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Jeff Hobbs, Four Smugglers Cove. Uh, what uh, number, please? I'm sorry, for, what, Jeff Hobbs, Four Smugglers Cove. And I guess I'm with the neighborhood, so I guess I'm against. Um, I don't have, I can't say anything more about the traffic issues. And I certainly agree with all that. And I have three other kids on the street. My question would be to the board, if something like this were passed and given to these folks, does that mean this house could then be sold in the future saying this is a business occupied home so a lawyer could have a practice down there, a dentist could have a practice down there? Does this make this house any different for the next person that buys it by granting this or does this have to be approved every time somebody wants to do anything in that house? It's my understanding it's specific for the, uh, the situation. Would you? expound on that it says that the condition of use shall expire if the owner a physically alters the property and the structure shall no, can no longer be used for that use ceases to use the property for the approved condition of use for one year fails to initiate the operation within one year uh, conditional use may be expanded. Oh, I already read that, so it really doesn't address whether you can transfer that to the, to the next owner. I would assume, because it's silent, that if another owner came in with a similar situation and was was would abided by the rules that were already on the books for one approval, that that probably could go. I would have the next owner. I, I just think that changes one building from the next on that street, and I, and I would have an issue with that, along with the other issues, too. Thank you. But certainly the board could make that as a condition that, uh, that, that the approval is for 
this particular application only i would see i couldn't i can't see why they couldn't do that i think in past cases we've always offered and that promise as well because it is silent anyways that it terminates upon the change of ownership Any other comments from the audience? Close the public forum portion of the meeting and open up to discussion by the board. <coughs> I think uh, the, the of the eight people came and spoke of the first seven uh, traffic was mentioned as a primary consideration uh, of all the first seven people the the last person uh, I'm not sure whether traffic was your primary point or not I didn't think I needed to elaborate on that anymore I, you you I, think I heard you say that Everything that had been said had been said already. Uh, um, it, it, I have driven down Smuggler's Cove as a tourist many times in the past, or a number of times, several times in the past. You're one of the ones they're speaking up then. <laughs> and and it, it is an awkward road. I mean, uh, it, my perception is it is an awkward road to uh, to to uh, turn around in and navigate without going into somebody's driveway and, and uh, uh, because the uh, stone walls and, and plantings are close to the road. I, that, that's, the, that's what stood out in my mind. Uh, today, as a board member, I drove down the road and pulled into uh, the applicant's driveway. Uh, and it, it would, I had a difficult time backing out and leaving. I was very, I have a, a large vehicle and I was very aware of the stone wall behind me. Uh, and it was mentioned by uh, a public comment that that had been uh, hit in the past. And, and I can see that why. Uh, of the elements that we are to look at based on the comments of the audience, uh, the one element that uh, it's actually addressed both in the definition portion. Uh, the nature of the business shall not, or profession shall not increase traffic on the street uh, by more than 2% or 10 trips per day. We've established that that definition has been met. Uh, as far as voting, the first item to vote on uh, in the standards for conditional use approval. The proposed use will not create hazardous traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Uh, I think that portion is subject, in my mind, is subject to discussion. Uh, uh, else it is a difficult road to, to navigate. If, any comments on that? I, too, drove down that road and reached a similar conclusion. It's very dense in that area, and it's hard to navigate. In addition to that, in the applicant's um, discussion, she had mentioned that the physician would be dis, uh, consulting, and there would be, while, while seeking other care, he would act in a consulting capacity, so that I would see that it would be a large number of one-time or maybe two-time visitors who are unfamiliar with that road as well, thus adding an additional hazard. As we go through the conclusions, my concerns would be conclusion number one, which speaks to the traffic conditions, um, creating a hazardous traffic condition, and then number three, uh, the proposed use will not adversely affect the value of adjacent pro properties, and I believe that they, to, a, to an extent, would be affected adversely. Uh. The re reverse 
engineering the, the uh, 2% versus the 10 uh, visits per household, uh, as was pointed out by someone in the audience, that the typical use in a uh, residential setting is 10 trips per day or, or five uh, visits, five round trips per day. Uh, if we extrapolate that out to 10 per day times 12 houses, we come up, as was pointed out, at a little over two trips per day. Uh, one option would be to limit it to one visit per day, for example. We could do that. Uh, if it's, you're feeling that any additional uh, non-local traffic is, is an issue, then, then we should address that as, as such. I guess I had concerns with um, the lack, lack of sidewalks and, um, you know, the very narrow nature of the road. Um, you also are putting cars, you know, this is the last, second to last house on the street, so it's putting cars all the way down to the end of the street where it's the most narrow and, of course, has to go by the rest of the residential section. So that that is uh, a primary concern. And the other thing that I guess I'm a little confused about how it plays out here in this application, but as I understood the applicant's comments, the apotherapy is not going to be charged for, but will be utilized or administered to patients. Um, so that even though there's no charge for it, it sounds like it's part of the medical services. I, I think that I heard something different with respect to the apotherapy, but. Um, I also drove down as far as Cove uh, just this afternoon, and um, uh, it is a very, very difficult road to navigate on. I made no attempt to, to drive up to, to your property, uh, because I could see that I would have some difficulty in backing out, and I, I didn't want to do that. Um, this is a very difficult situation um, uh, for the board. I. Uh, in particular, uh, uh, think that this is precisely the type of uh, home business which uh, should be fostered. Um, it is um, a very low impact, um, and if there is going to be a conditional use granted uh, for home businesses in a zoning ordinance, um, it, it is my belief that professional practices um, are, are something that, that should be encouraged sim simply because of the low impact in the neighborhood. That being said, uh, though, that the ordinance is relatively specific um, as to the conditions which much, must be met uh, if a conditional approval is going to be granted, uh, albeit that those standards are somewhat subjective in nature. And um, that's where the, uh, uh, that's why we get the big bucks here. Um, I would um, um, encourage my fellow members of the board, though, because of the nature of this, of, of, of the application, um, that we do consider um, this business for a conditional use uh, on some limited basis, um, keeping in mind that, that there will be perhaps some increase in, in traffic. Uh, I, I just think that, that uh, there, there has been uh, comments by, by neighbors that uh, there is traffic which you have made no attempt to control um, uh, and that uh, one, perhaps two visits a day uh, would be no more than perhaps someone, any of you would have if, if you were to have friends come to visit or, or your children come to visit or your grandchildren. And uh, um, I, I would I would like the board to consider some some limited approval of this application. Uh, in response, I think your points are well taken. I, uh, 
a home business is not an exception in Cape Elizabeth that should be applied for. It is a sanctioned and condoned portion of the ordinance that the ordinance does approve if it meets certain criteria. I think it's something that can take place without a major impact. However, I think we need to put it in perspective of location. And my feeling is that maybe Smuggler's Cove, due to access and the conditions of the road, make it difficult for me to feel comfortable with saying that this is a proper location for this business to take place. I have no objection to a home business. Maybe this is not the proper locale for that. It was stated by the applicant's wife that he does travel to the hospital daily for medical matters, or anticipates, did in his prior residency, and anticipates traveling to the hospital at this location, or this residency. So I think it could also be a reasonable expectation that if he travels to the hospital for other medical reasons, he could also travel to the hospital to see patients and do his consultation at the hospital, or at a different locale. I think if we put this situation on a different street in a different locale, it would have minimal and would be a very acceptable type situation. My only concern, based on listening to the public comments, is traffic in a very narrow, short street. And that is my only concern. Not the business, not the nature of the business, and that didn't seem to be a concern to the audience comments. My concern is the traffic, if based on the standards that I read earlier, if four patients a day might be seen, as was suggested, that's eight traffic, eight vehicular trips per day. That's an additional house to this street, the equivalent of one additional house. Whether that's low impact or high impact, it is the, does in effect create the traffic of an additional household based on traffic study. That's my main concern, is traffic in this area. Any other comments? I guess I would just clarify my comments. I guess I would indicate that I could live with, you know, if it was a reduced amount of visits per day. It strikes me that at that end of the street, ten visits per day is really almost a doubling of the number of trips to the end of the street. Or if you count just the house beyond it, if you count the house next to it, it's maybe pushing it up 50 percent. If you go ten trips a day, to me, if it was limited to maybe two customers a day, two patients a day, then it's more in tune with the type of traffic flow that goes to the houses around it. Maybe that would be an appropriate conditional, or condition on the application. And I'm just thinking out loud here on this comment. I think in view of a situation, any situation, we have to put the ordinance in perspective with, in this type of aspect, with the sentiment of the neighborhood. And if traffic is an issue, then I think part of our charge is to ensure the sanctity of the residential nature of a residential neighborhood. And on a three-way street or a large street, this certainly would not have the impact it does on a small, narrow, winding, not winding, but not straight 
uh, cul-de-sac type street. And uh, again, that's my only concern is, is the impact on traffic. Any other comments? Then, as far as I can. tell the uh, elements of the home business have been met. Should we uh, impose conditions at this time? Would you recommend that? Well, due to the fact you don't know whether it's going to pass or not, you might want to make con preliminary conditions. Okay. Uh, and then see if, where, where you go from there. Uh, one condition that was uh, mentioned is that the, the permit for the home business would terminate upon moving of the uh, applicant or selling of the property. So that would be one uh, issue. Uh, the, the ordinance clearly states that no outside storage of equipment or materials uh, are allowed at all. So that, that is clear and does not need to be stated as a condition. Are there any other conditions that temp, uh, provisional at this time conditions that should be recommended? I would move to limit the uh, number of visits to either two or three in people's discretion per day, given the strong sentiment of the community and also given the uh, narrowness of that end of the road. How many visits? I didn't hear you. How many visits? Either two or three per day. Yeah, it would have to. You'd have to be go two or four because three wouldn't wouldn't get them back out. So <laughs> uh, visits. Uh, in other words, either four or six oh, trips. Oh, well, you should talk in vehicle trips. It's vehicle less than two. Yeah, either either four or six vehicle trips, and I'm open to suggestions as to whether four or six is the appropriate number. I think. Establishing that type of conditional approval is is one that's going to be number one difficult to enforce. Uh, puts a burden on the code enforcement officer. It's it's no different than enforcing ten vehicle trips. Um, you know, I mean, I can't be there to watch it. It's usually the neighborhood that's going to right. going to monitor that. So whether it's six or four or ten, it it, it really doesn't matter from from code enforcement standpoint. I guess one, one thought I have is in, in terms of the ordinances written in, I guess in terms of setting a precedent and the next time we're faced with a, an application for a home business as well, um, will it become a common practice to modify the application to so it fits? Uh, are we, will, will we be negotiating on each application? Uh, I'm not sure about that. I, I think you can read the first uh, element, and that is the proposed use will not create hazardous traffic conditions when adding to existing and foreseeable traffic in the vicinity. Uh, it's it's my feeling that it will, whether uh, and and along the lines of that this business can take place at another locale that would not add to. Uh, create hazardous situation when it added to existing. I think probably when I drove down as a tourist, I was, uh, uh, I felt awkward turning around and, and leaving. And so if we have a conditional... Over and over again. We did it. That's correct. Uh, in, in response to your, your uh, concern, Steve, the, the, the ordinance itself specifically provides that the board can impose whatever conditions it wants in order to I think we have to set the precedent, of, the precedent of being even in how we decide these. And if we add a conditional um, provision, which mitigates it so it passes on number one, that we've, we've arbitrarily, well, maybe not necessarily arbitrarily decided, but we've, <coughs> we've reached a decision or conclusion that these number of trips are suitable so that condition number one is met. 
what do we do the next time and then the, the next time it, it if, and as applicants come before us they need to i think they have the expectation of continuity and a decision a reasonable decision reached once would be reached again i couldn't agree with you more but the problem inherent in in uh the this ordinance and unfortunately uh in, in, in ordinances in general is that they're uh, uh, by their by their nature uh, they they lack objective standards, and, and as a result of that, we're we're we're, we're going to be faced with, with, with this kind of dilemma, which which I, I'm all in favor of civil consistency. Uh, I think that's been a, a, a problem on this board. <coughs> Said, we do have the authority under the ordinance to to set conditions uh, that, that will will help us realize uh, some some objectivity. I, I see a point, and I agree with you that there'll never be one ordinance that fits every applicable opportunity. No, and that's why uh, it's brought before the board each time. Mm -hmm. The uh, for the benefit of the audience, the under standards for conditional use. The, the first item says, uh, well, the preface says, the board shall, after review of required materials, authorize issuance of a conditional use permit upon showing that, number one, any conditions prescribed for such conditional use will be satisfied. So that's, that is, that's our uh, jurisdiction to do that. Uh, and then the, the elements that we vote on are numbers two through six are what we actually vote on. We don't vote on the conditions, we, we preface the vote with condition. Mm -hmm. uh, the next section, condition of approval, the mo board may attach conditions to its approval of a conditional use. These conditions may include but are not limited to such requirements as number one, off-site off street improvements, number two, access restrictions, which is traffic, uh, three hours of use, uh, number four, buffering and screening, five, utility improvements, and number six, performance guarantee. Uh, we, we do have the right to impose any and all of those conditions, and, and I think uh, in the past we have uh, issued those as needed. Uh, and each one necessarily might be tailored to the conditional circumstances at hand. I think I'd just elaborate a little bit more on my thoughts um, on this issue you've raised um, regarding the ability to place conditions. I think we're sort of faced with kind of a unique circumstance in the sense that the applicant is, uh, has a very sympathetic application in the general sense, in the sense that it's, as noted before, that it's sort of the prototypical type of home business that would be appropriate in most communities. And also, I look at the fact that the applicant's 76 years old. It's not likely, as the applicant indicated, that it's going to be a mushroomy practice that's going to blossom for the next 40 years and grow into, and grow into something huge. So I take that into account as being one of the things that mitigates in favor of the applicant as being a minimal impact on this community. At the same time, it is a very unique community and a very uh, unique road in our community, very small, very tight road, very close walls, uh, and uh, kids playing in the streets, no sidewalks. So we have a very sensitive community that this very sympathetic applicant that wants to go into. And, uh, you know, I think we do have the discretion to try to balance um, the concerns and fears of the community that's going to be affected and the sensitivity of that community with also to try to accommodate what is a very sympathetic um, applicant. So I, I, you know, think that certainly some kind of conditional use, conditions placed on the conditional use permit might be appropriate. Any other comment? Could you then further modify your traffic request yeah. as a condition before we vote? Yeah, I would move to uh, put a uh, modify or put a condition on the application to limit the number of visits 
uh, by patients to two per day or four trips per day up to the uh, four days per maximum that have been requested. Uh, I would move to, uh, to approve the application in that fashion. Uh, I guess it, it would be fair to ask the representative whether that would be acceptable. If you feel that's... Uh, a, another issue that was brought up that, that might be a conditional use, that the, uh, the issue of, of the B and B use was, uh, B product use was brought up by uh, several of the uh, speakers, uh, the applicant's wife clearly stated that it would not be used as part of, of the practice uh, and not charge basis. Uh, uh, the, the question wasn't uh, raised earlier regarding sale. Uh, someone mentioned selling of the bee products. Uh, should this be a restriction? We haven't asked whether this would be a, uh, a use at all. Uh, whether the products would be so, uh, that in, could generate traffic in the area. Did, did, did we not establish that that had nothing to do with this it's issue, the though? business, correct. Then, then I don't see how it's an issue that you'd put a condition on something that's not part of the application. Uh, not for the home business, but a... I think that's con that would be that would be a separate by. permit. Code enforcement yeah. will take care of that if there's a complaint. It would be a change Understood. of use. They'd have to come before the board once again. Okay, that would be a, a separate issue. Okay. A separate conditional use permit. Okay. Any other comment? Shall we vote? Can you read them? What would be the conditional use? The two conditions that were proposed was that the conditional use permit will expire upon uh, moving uh, the, the applicant moving from the property or the sale of the property. In other words, the permit would not transfer with the property. Mm -hmm. Correct. Uh, the second condition is it uh, would be limited to two patient visits per day or four trips per day. Were there any other conditions? Uh, I, I just think you need to, and I don't need to please. labor this, but I think you need to stick to the four vehicle trips because if you say two patients and it's traffic and somebody happened to be a neighbor who wanted to walk over there, would that be included? I mean, you've got to stick to either one or the other. Okay. Uh, I said patient trip. I meant business trips per day, vehicular or business vehicular trips, trips per day. day. Is that better? Okay. <laughs> uh, that would be the second condition. Are there any other conditions? And just for my application, um, Code Enforcement Officer Smith, my understanding is that a trip in a drive into the house is one trip, a drive out is another trip. That's correct. So two car round trips per day maximum. Four, I don't know. Four vehicular trips. <laughs> I don't know why we're making this difficult. But. Just trying to clarify. <laughs> okay. Uh, item one, the proposed use will not create hazardous traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. All those in favor? All those opposed? Uh, we do not have a simple majority that uh, element number one fails. Element number two, the proposed use will not create unsanitary conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air, or other aspects of its design or operation. All those in favor? Four in favor, zero opposed. Item number two passes. 
Item number three, the proposed use will not adversely affect the value of adjacent properties. All those in favor? All those opposed? Three in favor, one opposed. That item passes. Element number four, the proposed site plan and layout are compatible with adjacent property uses and with the comprehensive plan. All those in favor? Four in favor, zero opposed. Element number five, the design and external appearance of any proposed being will constitute an attractive and compatible addition to its neighborhood, although it need not have a similar design, appearance, or architecture. architecture. All those in favor? Four in favor, zero opposed. Element number one failed with a vote of two to two. Elements two through five passed. Uh, according to the ordinance, all five elements must pass for the conditional use permit to be approved. Um, Conditional use permit is not is not approved. We'll continue on with the meeting if we may. You better speak a little louder. <laughs> Folks, the meeting's still in session. Thank you. So thank you very much thank for your talk. I certainly understand. You're welcome and uh, speaking on behalf of the board because I'm sure the board in its entirety feels this way. Uh, we we hope that this has no influence on whether or not you this Thank you. Thank you very much for your for your presentation. Best of luck with the move. Best of luck with the move. Well, I have to see what you want to do. I'll still, I guess I'll still see you on Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a lovely community. Under communications, I would like to uh, pass on the recognition that our code enforcement officer, Bruce Smith, uh, achieved. Uh, uh, Bruce Smith is president of the Maine, State of Maine Building Officials and Ins Inspectors Association. He's president and he was recently recognized uh, by the governor uh, and, and viewed as a driving force in getting the state of Maine to adopt a building code that will serve as a model and a standard for communities uh, that have no building code in the state of Maine. Uh, I'd like to congratulate you on your recognition. I think that's quite an honor. Thanks. Next meeting will be June 22nd. Uh, any other communications? I have none. Uh, may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Okay.